Name Chase. Hello and welcome to another stream where I'm going to play some games in main and then rank them against each other. I did a part 1 for this a few days ago and I figure uh, it's about time I did a part 2 really. So I don't know how long this stream's going to be. I don't know how many games we're going to cover. But um, let's just have some fun and um, look at a few games. And if anybody wants to um, have a little chat, the uh, the chat box is somewhere on your screen. So uh, feel free to say hello. And um, yeah, that's about all for the intro for this one. So. Let's start with a game called Gunmaster from Metro. This is a 1994 release. And uh, not one I play much of. Uh, the emulation is not quite perfect, as you will see on the uh, title screen scrolls in here. It's, uh, yeah, there's some brain pattern problems. It turns out to be a little more stuffy than it should be. Also, um, yeah, you'll have to let me know on the, the volumes and stuff like that because I can't tell if I'm too loud or too quiet. So if the, the games are drowning me out, just let me know because that is uh, quite often the case, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So this is... Um, yeah, it's a platform fighting... It's a bit like a single screen platform, except it scrolls. And you're taking enemies out with a gun. And it's gun master. So, almost a combination of different genres. It's got a you, you pull yourself up on the platform, like um, maybe a more traditional platform rather than a single screen platform. Right? And you've got your gun as one of your main attacks, but you can also pick up enemies and throw them. And uh, it's definitely an unusual and maybe unexpected combination. You know, you can uh, you can hold both buttons to sort of defend yourself against attacks like that. Um, the controls are really little weird, I mean, you don't really have a punch as such, um, but you can be flying kick and you've got sort of fucking combinations, a bit like Street Fighter. Um, it's a, a very odd mix of, um, don't miss this one. And I think you really have to learn everything you can do if you're going to fully enjoy it. I don't know everything you can do, but you see the combos there. But yeah, I kind of know quite how you categorize this one, I suppose, um, it's got elements of things like, well, um, Manco's Outbox, he's sort of back to what would be, um, Smash Brothers style gameplay, I suppose, but, um, yeah, it's got two players, we've got, yeah, you're just clearing out the rooms of enemies, but, um, it's a little more in-depth than maybe the standard single screen platform, it's not about really, um, trying to combo everything in the same way, it's more, more combat based. Like with the, the, the gun attacks and the regular attacks. But yeah, I've played this one a few times in screen before, I think not recently. Um, I think it's one that gets overlooked quite a bit. I may have played it on the um, old Google Jump uh, streams I did. Um, yeah, and my camera's frozen, hasn't it? Uh -huh. Joy, joy, joy. Is it frozen? No, it's not frozen. Okay, it looked like it's frozen here, maybe for a second. Um, no, we've got the camera. It's not frozen. It's not frozen in my screen problem. Wait, we did first stage. You see this one? The enemies there, the main ones we've got to kill, got the health bars at the bottom, so we've got firm um, so those are the two big guys there, and the, the minions, um, I don't think you have to clear out. We need to clear out these two. I don't know the moves. I'm kind of buffing matching my way through the front. Grab them, throw them. Uh, yeah, this, this is one of those that... I'd say it's, it, as far as arcade games go, it, it definitely stands out as being unique. Rather, there are, there are definitely similarities to other games. I don't think any of them quite um, combine the elements in the same way as the It's again one of the reasons I want to feature the feature of this. Uh, it was interesting to pull these games out, ones that very rarely get mentioned, and um, go them off at the top. Show how to play them really well because I'm genuinely terrible at these things. 
Shots don't feel to actually do much damage, do they? I thought the gun would be able to do a little bit more power from the roof. And then maybe you've got to take on the gun. I think that one is almost right, not quite the hell, but that one is going to be right. Do you see any more minions spawning? I'm guessing not. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's watching. Have you played this one before? Or is this a new one to you too? I don't lose. There we go. I heard it only pretty low, and there's a time of there too, which did keep counting after the stage had ended. I don't know if you can climb over after you've already walked on that would be a bit annoying. I mean, there are games that do that. So the destroyer from jail is um, going to do that. So you've got different difficulty ratings on these couch slightly. So I'll go for um, one of the easier ones. It looks like you can take them out in different orders if you can choose. Seems to put point um, arrows at the point where the boss is. <laughs> oh, this one's in a little bit of a suit, I think. But I don't think there's any uh, reason you'd want to go for a specific, specific order, like uh, maybe one of the Mega Man games, which seems to be Silver Man's a little bit off, you know, the uh, Captain Mega Man. Um, a couple of, a couple of arcade Mega Man games, um, it's on CPS Harbor. And that's the thing that you're fighting, uh, fighting a big enemy per stage, um, although so Mega Man's the whole kind of good steel and the attacks. But, uh, it's a bit of a boss, boss rush game, I suppose that's the idea of that. Boss rush arena fighter. Well I've died. <laughs> Slight visual glitch there. Uh, I guess we have to start the stage again. Okay, yeah, Metro. Metro weren't doing arcade games for that long, so you know they never quite got the household recognition that they um, like did in ages. Not, I don't think they did. Uh, most of them pretty good. It's not on the puzzle games, and I do like my puzzle games, so it's probably not standard like that. So there's not much in the way of platform at this stage. Um, <laughs> in fact, you can crap down here. It's a better strategy. I don't know, it's a massive bit more. Let's see what happens. Well, I don't know if it's a good strategy if I can actually grab the thing. No, it's down there. I think blocking is probably also very important in this game. This might be an easy one to stay on here. So, now, uh, sex can be a case of blocking things and also not any more impact on it. So, how did they end up doing that thing where they're bouncing on the on your head? I mean, you sort of head over that handle. I don't know what I was doing to actually achieve that. Um, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the thing. That sometimes I get a bigger shot and it uh, doesn't seem to be a charge shot, so I don't know how much it is a bigger shot either. But that's a different, different combination. Probably should be blocking a bit more. So yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. There we go, that's what I have to do. Well, this doesn't seem to damage it much at all, so maybe not the best stuff here. What is that? Um, that did a lot more damage. In fact, um, I guess that's one of the things that I'm not too sure about. What does more damage than uh, or the group, you know, which attacks do most, the most damage, which some of these attacks you would think might be powerful and do very little, and then you just do a throw or a kick and it's in massive, that's how it goes on. Okay, yeah, there we go. Beat you. Uh, I think we could, uh, 
Victorious. Oh, looking good. Happy bro. Yeah, of course, Oh, okay. He's got a big stage, is not he? Yeah, there's a, a lots of different stages and character parts. There's a significant amount of gaming here, so... Player versus player like Smash would be the problem, I would I don't know, I'm just struggling to really, um, really compare it to that much. Oop, really trying to get out of there, I think. Um. Did you see the record? Did you call through the story? Yeah, the, uh, the minions on the ground here are going to be draining my health if I don't take care of them, so, um, uh, do that and this oh, I don't think we can pick this one up and put it a little bit big for that. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Something drained my health quite quickly at that point. Okay, let's uh, let's maybe not go with that one. Let's uh do a bit of this Long uh oh, no. quite quick. That a health pick up? Yeah, that's quite quick. This one's another one with more platforms, so I'm gonna see now I think that's a power push I'm gonna want to avoid it and take it. If you were good at this and had strategy, you'd be able to um, recruit it without taking damage all the time. So you can get health back between stages. There are health pickups. That has been a network error. <laughs> That's not the one of them. Let's see. Let me see. Right, that's a pick from the screening. Um, and maybe I seem to see something good. I'm on to PC. Um, Okay, well, hopefully I'm still screaming. Two looking from what I can tell, which uh, again is why a lot of moves seem to combine. Um, like the block is both ones at once like that. The blue move attacks, kind of thing straight back to her. Oh, okay, so oh she's just doing a row anyway, maybe. The screen when it's looking back, it might be. Oh, I'll just be the connection in that screen. Yeah, okay, we've got that time, so we've got, we've got this little death knight now, of course. So, just to make things a bit more tricky. And I'm actually going to drain my health very quickly if you hit me. Okay, this is not going so well anymore. Okay, okay now. So, I should time, time over the monster there. Yeah. <laughs> we got them. So yeah, good master. Um, hmm. I think it's a pretty good game. I think it's a pretty good game that nobody talks about. I don't have the strategy for it. Um, I've got characters. 
plenty of you know plenty to do plenty of stages and um, so the emulator not 100 percent perfect but um yeah sort of a metro game that a few people talk about say 1994 so it's not too late in the not too late for this type of thing I think it's got enough polish had this been uh, some game from even maybe Mitchell people might sure talk about it a bit more but for Metro yeah I heard was really looking up and talking about games from Metro but you would say it's a pretty good one for me they did license some their uh, their game ideas and things to IPS later and possibly to and um, Google Star oh here we go because we get to um, we get some uh, um, move list for the characters in the track mode. This is nice because a lot of fighting games don't do that. So, um, might have been handy to uh, pay attention to beforehand. But there you go. If you, um, if you pay a bit more attention. So, how does one player versus two player work? Uh, is it co op? Or is it fighting each other? I think it might be co op. Which again is uh, a nice touch if it is because a lot of these. Games are just player versus player, so you know you are it does look like you're taking out the enemies with both players rather than fighting each other. Um, but yeah, you've not seen this one, then uh, definitely give that, um, have a look at Gun Master because I, I think this one is probably going to end up near the top of the list um, by the time we're done today. Uh, we will see that. We'll see. So let's bring up um, said ranking page. Why has it forgotten my actual um, window on here? I don't know. Uh, hold on. OBS is being silly. It did this earlier. It did this earlier. It, um, yeah, okay. delete the window capture and re add the window capture. Okay. Uh, and um, we want to be capturing. Hold on, it's being very silly and it can't see the window I want to capture because it's OBS and a bit new. There we go. Oh, no, I'm going to move everything on. Let's see. There we go. It's, um... <laughs> anyway. Anyway, anyway, so we've only played the one game for now, which is Gunmaster. So, Gunmaster ends up being the only game in our list so far. I put it in the middle because, you know, we don't know how other games are going to compare to it. So, um, yeah, on to the next game. And I'm going to um, I'm gonna pick one that I know is um, not very good. <laughs> So uh, I think we know where the next one is going to um, going to end up, but I think it's one that is worth having a quick look at. So, uh, <laughs> why am I picking Riding Hero on the Neo Geo? It's, I think they keep pushing it. Um, they really keep pushing this game. There's been Two Arcade Archives ACA collections announced physically for the Switch and maybe other platforms, but at least the Switch. And while they've got a bunch of good Neo Geo games on them, they have once again got uh, Riding Hero, which is from 1990. And, um, yeah. Joystick based racing game. I think it's got slight story RPG elements if you want to go that route. But otherwise, uh, yeah, look, look at these basically identical looking bikes that are just different colours. So we don't get to select our track. And then these these graphics that, let's be honest, would not have looked out of place on those terrible plug and play uh, games I was playing the other day. Um, it's. Yeah, the Neo Geo is not designed to do this kind of game. game. It does have sprite scaling hardware to shrink sprites, but it doesn't really have line hardware to do loads, and it doesn't really have the draw capacity to do um, entire, you know, 3D, big 3D, it's a scale game, like say, 
Pegasus and 32 with F1 exhaust note and the like. So you're just left with this. A very dull racing game. Um, but yeah, we, we can race around the track a little bit. You can see some ugly sprite scaling. It's uh, very flat. It's, it's just the Neo Geo. It's got so many really polished games. I mean, we do have a little hill, but for the most part, it, it is quite flat. Maybe tracks are meant to be flat, but nothing about this game stands out. And there we run out of time. We do have a turbo, I should probably have used the turbo or something. Um, configured correctly um, yeah. how do we even use the turbo on this game oh there we have to be at full speed first I think I don't remember that because it doesn't communicate it well or is it just going to work anyway I, I don't know didn't seem to be doing anything before it was now um, but yeah this is this is the game this is what you get. This is what I think how you think is still worth putting on compilations and Neo Geo games and it, it, well I think there's a reason they didn't really do any other racing games until the Hyper 64 and the, uh, the two rally games because the Neo Geo hardware is just not built for this kind of thing. I can't use my turbo now. I don't know. Chase, it plays something like Chase HQ and you can use your turbo whenever. This, yeah, it's. I guess they're going for Super Hang On, but Super Hang On, you've got unlimited super speed as long as you're going at top speed. This one just seems to let you use your turbo when you're about top speed and, and you have a limited number. Of it. It's just not a good game. And we can play it again. We round one Japan. Are we going to complete it? Probably not. Now, the original hardware did have a link feature, which interestingly still shows it in the menu here, even though if you select it, I think it hangs the game. So I don't know if that is actually main detecting the link hardware is there when it's not, or that there's a link, something linked up when it's not, because it's always done that in menu. You go to the menu, select link, and it, it will, I believe, hang. I tried to in there, but it certainly did last time I uh, selected. There weren't many Neo Geo games to support the link feature. There was this, and I think League Bowling, where you could link it to like eight units. Uh, I've never seen such a setup. And I suppose they abandoned that idea fairly early on. Maybe it was a bit expensive and they'd have extra MCUs and cartridge to support it. I mean, if you've got eight Neo Geo cabinets, you've potentially got eight different games. I don't think you're really going to want to have eight League bowling machines? It, it feels like a waste. In the first place. Yeah, say digital controls too on this one, so it's a joystick based game, which again, yeah, it's just not going to be as good as, well hang on, we can pull position and there we go. And again, it, it doesn't let you roll forward after the time is up, it's instant time. Time up, time over, and I prefer the games that just gradually slow you down and maybe let you roll over the, the finish line when the time runs out. And this is just like, no, you're done. That is, that is uh, your credit over, no lucky, you were just about fast enough. Um, so yeah, Riding Hero, one of the most disappointing new Duke games. So does this still freeze if I select um, to play here? Wait a moment. And I think, uh, yeah, that, oh no, it, it eventually starts, okay. I don't know if it does that on the um, cabinet, if there is no link cabinet, but it does eventually start if you speed it up. I thought it hung for a while, or longer, but um, yeah. Not the ideal experience if you can 
and the arcade cabinet for about uh, 30 seconds to select the player was no other cabinet. Uh, and no countdown, no indication that it's actually doing anything. It's, it doesn't seem to have a visible counter on the screen and it's like waiting for the cabinet. It just says wait a moment and then fairly eventually unhangs itself. But it, it looks like it's hung for a while. I suppose we should have a look at the RPG mode briefly too. An RPG mode's more simply not in a home game, not an arcade game, and so maybe they were targeting the AES for that, but I'm not sure. Priorities there look terrible because the bike went off into the distance and was still being rendered in front of the the um, board at the side of the road. Very, very low effect new view game this one. I think again, see the same thing. Uh, yeah, I'm probably nitpicking the details there, but... There are so many better arcade racing games. So yeah, let's have a quick look at the RPG story mode. Look, the end of the name. Look, get a bit of a story. It's an apartment house. Take a break, sleep or exit. Take a break. Oh. My energy has been recovered. Exit. Okay. Now we can go different places but with a timer. Is this what you want for an arcade game? Can't go through. Oh, no, I can't go. Should I go to the bike shop? No, nope, I can't go there either. Oh, see, this this does not feel like an arcade game. Also, it's not very easy to tell what's selected. Uh, this, I want to exit. I... Flashing square circle, isn't it? Okay, bike shop. Let's just get to the bike shop. Oh, it's a bike shop. Oh, I can buy a bike. They're all fast. Do you want to check them out? Uh, yes, let me buy a bike. And now I can set my bike. Maybe, possibly. Yes, I'll. I'll, I'll... All the time, I, you know, the uh, the um, time was ticking down here. I, I paid money for the, the, that's the, that's that's the face. The, the true arcade experience. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, just let me race in this terrible race. I don't. Finally, I get to race. Look. <laughs> We get the race against this. I've only got one turbo. Right, but the time is still going. Right, Ooh, there's a car. Another car. Look, oh dear. At least I can fly. I have no turbos left. Yeah, you can't go around this corner quickly. It's not entertaining. But yeah, this is this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> oh dear. And then your time runs out. And it actually if you want to continue or not, because yeah, skill gets you nowhere in this mode. It's just buying time. So I think we know where this is going in our um, little ranking. It's going to go below Gunmaster. Oh, 
What am I doing? So there we go. SNK is riding here then. Quickly sits bottom. Will it remain there? Well, um, figure we'll give it a chance to not sit on the bottom. Because, um, yeah, let's play Driving Force. Anybody know Driving Force? Driving Force is one of those conversion kits. This one is for Pac-Man hardware. <laughs> so, in 1984, six whole years before um, the SNK game, we have Driving Force, which um, I've heard many people say is terrible. But, uh, oh, we crashed. So, yeah, we're racing along or overtaking cars or trying to overtake cars. I mean, it's got a good sense of speed. It's nice. I mean, you can kind of tell this wants to be um, Atari's Enduro for the, the 2600. You're just racing along through different um, different scenes. I mean, we've got to the snowy scene right now. Now it's a bit foggy. Yeah, very, very enjoyable, isn't it? Um, maybe a little bit like Sega's Turbo, but on a budget. Um, night scene where you can just see the headlights. Unfortunately, you will crash quite a lot. I don't seem to be any gears. There we go, in that time. And the race is over. Uh, hey Mass Ninja, welcome, welcome, I hope you're doing well. Good to see you. So yeah, we're playing um, a few different games and ranking them against each other. So far we've played Metro's Gunmaster, which is pretty good. And we've played Senkei's um, Riding, Riding Hero. Um, which was... Uh, not really good at all. And I thought I'd give, uh, you know, I'd give um, Riding Hero a chance to get itself up at the bottom of the list by playing um, a game that's often considered kind of bad, and that is Driving Force. Uh, I mean, it's kind of difficult to navigate. This is another joystick, rather than uh, you know any kind of analog steering wheel or pedals. So I think it's a fairly fair thing to compare. However, um, I'm going to say it now, I'm, I'm having more fun with this one than I did with that Neo Geo game. Because this is simple, you just kind of dodge the cars. Um, yeah, it's got a few annoyances like uh, when you crash sometimes the cars will just accelerate into you from behind. Uh, it's difficult to get going again. Getting very far. Well, yeah, I've got an extended time. So, you know, I'm not just paid for a set amount of time like in the uh, the story mode of um, Riding Hero. Riding Hero. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, skill based. I don't have much skill, but. Um, hey, K Price, welcome. I hope you're doing well. So, yeah, I get some. Um, Bonus points for the cars to pass, so it's yeah, it's a little bit like Sega's Turbo, but on a budget. I mean, I can kind of see the 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 point in this. I mean, your your Pac-Man machines might have not been making much money by, you know, eighty eighty four was it? And um, simple cheap driving game. It's no poor position. And uh, I mean, if we're honest, it, it's not as good as. Uh, Atari's Enduro, but Enduro wasn't an arcade game. So if you wanted that sort of experience in the arcade, 
You, you, you could have done worse than this one. That's my general feeling. Obviously, the, these days, I mean, the, any Pac-Man board is going to be converted back to Pac-Man or something. Uh, they be more popular because that's how the, the retro scene has gone, and you know, Pac-Man is uh, Pac-Man is no longer a tired old arcade game that's been in your arcade for three, four years that everybody's bored of. It's um, an iconic piece of gaming history. Nobody wants to play pac -Man. nobody really wants to play Driving Force. However, at the time this kit was released, I actually think this is one of the better kits. Get a quick blaster gameplay. I didn't actually get to the extent that time. <laughs> you got to, uh, home from meeting some new damn black flies and you are tired. Well, um, I guess that's a good reason to sit at a PC and just watch something and relax. And uh, yeah, so. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just feeling a little rough and slightly hungover because um, I was out in Nottingham last night and um, maybe partying a little too much for my friends. <laughs> so I'm just trying to relax and do a little bit of a, a stream here and um, probably worse at the games than usual. But uh, okay, I think we've seen what um, Driving Force has to offer. And. Um, Yeah, I I don't think driving force is worse than riding hero. I, I'm I'm sorry if anybody disagrees. It's it's definitely not as good as Gunmaster. Gunmaster was actually was really good, but um, driving force, the Pac-Man conversion. Um, who made it? Uh, Shinkai Inc. <laughs> Yes, Shinkai Inc. Uh, Magic Electronics license. I think Shinkai is a developer. Shinkai Inc. in '84 managed to do a better job than SNK did in 1990. Fortunately, SNK. Uh, okay, so where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? This is uh, this is a good question. I'm going to consult my list of games. Um. Oh yeah, I didn't actually. Sorry, I did. I wasn't even showing the ranking screen there. There we go. Sorry, I forgot to change the lead But there we go. We see. Um, we have put a driving force above riding hero, but below gunmaster. And now I need to pick another game. So let's uh, let's have a look. Let's see what we do. Let's pick a a random page number of games on um database website and see what comes up if anything hello internet load <laughs> come on get down the end yeah this this site's a little bit slow or well, the internet here is not quite uh working properly i'm not sure i've been having a few issues anyway oh here, here we go here we go All right what are we going to play? Mm, what's on this page? Okay. Okay. Uh, isn't that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to play um, a classic game for the stream, actually. One that I've played a fair few times. But it was on the page I just brought up. So... We've got Pirates from Nix, a Spanish game. Now, uh, this is um, a Cabal style game. <laughs> um, I'm going to say right now, this is, this is one I, I do enjoy. Pirates. Yeah, that's uh, not the accent. <laughs> You know, you've got your nice little animated intro here and um, hand drawn art. Might be dangerous. Brave. 
Not every arcade game treats you to a little little bit of story before you get to play. And you can choose where we start, but uh, let's start. Stage one. Oh yeah, you um, shoot the enemies, you've got a set number you have to fit each stage. The other things with bonuses, uh, I think that was the bonus. And uh, yeah, much, 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 you know, shoot the witch. <laughs> much like in Pal itself, if you shoot the buildings, they do sort of start to deteriorate and will eventually fall down. So, Pal uh, is one of the first games ever in the arcades, or even some of the home systems, with this kind of level of destruction of scenery. Uh, I think many people know this maybe from the likes of Wild Arms instead. Wild Arms is an interesting one. It used to be a, um, an official sort of bootleg version of the SNES game dumped, which uh, has been adapted to use credits for Wild Arms. That one's not played it extensively, so I don't know if the problems will open across the game, but some of those bootleg conversions kind of fall apart after it. Yeah. Put your bombs too if you really want to use them. Just various animals. You love the ships in the background, you see. I feel too that you're very smart and very good. It's a bit so generous in for the pallets, this one. It's got pretty good aim, good long range shooting to be um, taking down these boats all the way on the horizon. It's a good play. All the way over there, yeah. Perfect. I don't think we want the skills. We need to avoid those skills. You got oh. it. Got it. Ooh. You enter the next scene, a little bit less destructive than this one. You're quite fantastic characters. <laughs> Anybody who's uh, watched these uh, these streams or any of my streams, you know we do a, a little cow spotting thing. So these with cows are definitely part of part of the entertainment thing. I did forget that cow was there. But yeah, for a, a game that is they just trying to, you know, clone something that was a bit more popular. I think the developers of this one did a fantastic job. And the the pirate theme really appeals to me. So, um... probably rather play this over Valve, or even Blood Brothers, the official sequel to Valve. Looking at pirates. Yeah, it's low budget, it's, uh... Not got the highest quality audio, I mean, it's just loot samples rather than anything sequenced or composed. You know, gameplay is clean, isn't it? Um, the graphics good too. On the arc on this one. Very Euro take. And then, decent game. Let's see. Super bombs. Ooh, I died. Yeah, you, your roll gives you a, a few and bit low slide in this case, gives you a few invincibility grains. You can always roll through bullets and dodge things that way. Uh, the game is relatively easy, at least at first. I'm sure you can set it to a hard difficulty if you really want. Some viewers are not happy with games. I appreciate the fact it's not super difficult. Danger, 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 danger. What kind of battleship are you going to do? this. Flying battleship. <laughs> hey, what's up? How do you come up with that bomb spam? Do you really want to? Not always the best strategy, but for the purposes of these streams, bomb spamming is just fine. 
Now we can choose where we're going to go. So we go to the medium. Here. Uh, pick up the no, we can't. Again, you see the tapes with the pole, we'll be starting off on stage with a bunch of old ones. Which we can we can destroy. We must take the wind off some point. Oh, and that is uh, me dead. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, what's the... Oh, yeah. I'm not making anything in my name at the top corner, I haven't noticed. But we can shoot you! Any bounces? No, we didn't miss Kieran's on. Oh! Yeah, we got him. Yeah, I guess... Um, I mean, hey, hey, uh... Is out of who? I guess yeah. You want to you want to see in this in the um, chat. Sorry for pronouncing that wrong. I'm really bad with pronunciations. I guess yeah. Unless you're in you, you're in Spain, it's very unlikely you would have seen this in um, the arcades. Even even in Spain itself, um, I don't think it's all wide distribution. Um, we, the first we'd he heard of it as, as, as or the first first we heard of it as um you know even main developers when was is when the uh, developer of the game itself uh, came forward and said, hey, look, uh, you know, I, I got this board from when I worked at the company and uh, can you emulate it? So we did. It has shown up once or twice since then, um, you know, on auction sites and things like that. So it definitely got released back in the day. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it would have really been seen outside of Spain. And they're holding up some hope that somebody manages to license it for one of those modern compilations because you know it'd be quite nice to see this on have some sort of official widespread release because it deserves to be more well known about it. a lot of work's going to be you know, the art and design even gameplay i mean it's smooth the frame rate i don't think it really blocks frames anywhere it, it runs well and but it's got two player support and um yeah it's, it, it, it stands out maybe more so than say even Cabal itself that's so I mean, I'm not gonna... <laughs> yeah, four name, four name letters, four letters for your name, which is unusual. Usually three is the standard. Yeah, I think this is one of the uh, the higher points of um, the Spanish arcade development. And yeah, I would have seen this one too. I've seen it in the arcades. So anyway, I hope you're doing well. Um, there we go. Nix and Nix. Not, not to be confused with the um, Korean company with the same name, from what I'm told. Nix. Well, N I C S, I think they are. Who did, um, what was it, Dragon Ball? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Dragon Ball, which was the weird hacker, Ninja Gaiden. The pirates, yeah, um, I rather like pirates, so let's actually remember to bring up the ranking screen this time. Um, where am I going to put it? Yeah, it's better than Driving Force. Better than Gunmaster, um, yeah. Personally, I like it better than Gunmaster too. The Gunmaster is a really good game and more original than Pirates, but I, I just really like Pirates as a game. So I'm going to put this one at the top of the game we've done today. And, uh, yeah, I highly do recommend anybody who has not played Pirates from Nix uh, gives it a look because yeah, it's it's much better than it has any right to be. And it's all original code too. It doesn't feel like it's just a hack of Cabal or anything else. It, it does seem like an original creation with a original code. So well done to the developers of that one. And um, now we're gonna have to have a quick look for in the game. Uh, what are we gonna do about that? Uh, is it gonna load? Ah, yes, we've got another page. <laughs> is there anything on this page I want to play? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Okay. I, I see a game on that that page we can play. Uh, not one I'm looking forward to. I'll, I'll say that in a minute. Shogun Warriors from Kaneko. This is one of those games that has. A substantial amount of protection. 
um, I think it says eight up there, so probably developed by eight up for an echo. This is the world release. Uh, there's an interesting claim in this one in main actually. If you look at the Korean set of this in main, it's um, got quite a bunch of the Japanese imagery censored. So like um, I think all the, the rising sun imagery is removed in the Korean version and other things, but we're playing the, the world set. Now we'd say versus fighter, we've got eight characters to choose from. Some of them quite obviously inspired by characters in other games. Um, so we'll just be sumo. Why, why give some of the actual names when you can just call them Sumo and Samurai? So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a fighting game. I don't think it's set to put it out. Stop, 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 stop. And then you can do enough. Okay, I can just do that. The one problem with this, I don't say I don't know the moves, so um, we have a selection of buttons. I think it's four buttons. And I've lost. Anything that might be a combination here to uh, do, do remove, but no, this your standard street fighting moves don't seem to be doing anything here, which is uh, a problem if you're just trying to play a game and you don't know the moves. And just, yeah, that happens. It does not start off easy. The uh, even the first enemies will you know, take you out pretty quickly if you don't know what you're doing. So, um, or sumo there did not stand a chance. Look at the cute kitty there. And keep meowing at me, kitty. Keep meowing at me. See you later. See you later. Maybe. But no, um, should we try that again? So it does tell me some moves there. So down, left, right, punch is a move. And I'll just keep hitting punch. I think that's press all four buttons at once, actually, for that character. And that one. Uh, it should just be Ninja. Created the name Ninja. And now we get to... Actually, fight sumo. Yeah, the, even the portrait art there on the screen just looks squash. I mean, it's it's not meant to be a wide screen, so it's yeah, it's um. Now, for a long time, before this was emulated, I, I really wanted to get it running, see what it was like. Look, look how much damage that moved the sumo. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I can, okay, okay, I can launch a little star here, look, 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 even on the first stage, you know, I've got my fancy star, I'm just blocking it, you're blocking everything. This is the first stage. If you can't let my, my special moves work on the first stage, then what, what type of game are you? That's, that's, that's... I don't know. You play a Capcom fighter, and yeah, if you, you're on the first stage, you're going to be launching all your, your um, special moves, and they're going to be hitting it, generally. But it's only after a few stages that they start to not work anymore. And this one, even from the get go, the, the AI is blocking and um, the moves are ineffective, so. You know, they just, you know, they, they read the inputs and just them. And then they do a move that takes off a massive chunk of your health. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure in the entire time I played this game, I have um, never got past the first stage without cheats. Okay, meow, meow, meow. Let's pick a different character. Let's just pick Kabuki this time, though. Um, I'm going to play soon what we're going to do. It's a show time. Give up. Give up. Go. Give 
massive damage the enemy with the CPU does. And that's it. I've lost. You see my my kind of issue with this one. Maybe if you learn how to play it. Fine. Wait up for that. Should we do that to escape? I don't know. Is that one of my special moves that just kick that can be normal? I don't know. Um I, mean, I don't want to say this is one of the worst fighting games ever because I'm really not qualified to um, say that. <laughs> hey, Shuttlebottom. Um, welcome to me suffering trying to play Shogun Warriors, a game that um, I've never worked out how to play. I mean, there's not even... Uh, there's, I mean, there's difficulty options. Let's put it on one easy and see if that makes any any difference and see if we can get anywhere on difficulty level one because then we might actually see some good game. Uh, yes. Yeah, the, the the characters are all just named after, you know, what they are, rather than actually having names. I don't know if the Japanese version has got actual names or, or what, but... Oh, come on, this is meant to be easy. Yeah. Even got the cat animation wrong, they... I mean, Kanako got a cat animation wrong. It didn't I just put the game on easy? Alright. <laughs> Maybe the Japanese version is better. I'm really not sure. This character's useless. <laughs> What was that? Oh, oh, oh. oh, I've actually won a round somehow. I mean, not through any real skill, just backing with him. That gentleman is slashing at me with a sword. It does feel very unfair. And it, I mean, the AI do too much damage. They block everything. They. they, they I, I do wonder if it's a regional thing. Maybe I should have fired up the Japanese version. It might be more one of those cases where the export version just uh, gets ridiculously difficult. Or you just have to learn a very specific way to play it. Uh, it doesn't reward button mashing for the most part. But I don't think it's a protection thing because the protection is pretty well emulated. It's uh, well simulated, not emulated. But it's just copying data from next turn and well, if it's encryption for the most part. If the data was wrong, it didn't work, and there we go, I've lost again. <laughs> Realistic, this is where they got the idea from Bush for Bushido Blade. Um... See you later. I mean... I, I think that they're just terrible, they didn't seem to have any stretchy arms that I could see, unless I just didn't know how to do the stretchy arms. So let's pick a Shogun. I think I think one of my special moves is just can, can, can you give me people other than the Sumo to fight against. Again, it's not randomizing any I always notice that with these fighting games. You, you, you know, you, you can be watching track static mode, wanting one specific stage to come up, and that stage never comes up. Um, I don't know why, but it always seems to be the stage you want to see. Uh, it's just the, the nature of random number generation, I guess. Unless there, some of them are weighted. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of the Capcom games, the, the stages that appear in a track mode, must be weighted somehow. This character doesn't seem quite as weak. I don't know any moves, but I can still do some damage. Quite easy. So an hour into the stream. I'm going to say this is going to be maybe a two-hour stream, so we're about halfway through. Oh, no, you've... no, no, now you've got super aggressive again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay.
my big sword. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have to do this to get out of life. I'm going to die here, but not here. Come on. It's just going ridiculously tough again. It let me win one round, and that's all it was going to do. Reactive AI. Uh, just, I think, ramping the difficulty up as I won the round. Um, hmm. Okay. One more coin. Let's just have a look at. Uh, have a look at you? Yeah, I think we have. Big spotty green thing. But looks entirely different on the profile pictures. And now it isn't spotty. The art is inconsistent across. Oh, well, I've got the stretchy arms. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to question that. Okay. Um, yeah. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Apparently she loves me. <laughs> Game is so crushing to watch, I can't imagine it's any better to play. No, um... I've never managed to find any enjoyment in this game. Uh, it, it, it just... No. I will show what I was mentioning earlier briefly. Korean version. Uh, notice how the uh, the red spot has gone from the title screen. <laughs> uh, it's the same for the game art as well. The, I'm not going to actually play it because I don't play it anymore. But if we get one of the stages where you can see the thing, we might not. I think we are. I think this might be one of the stages. The yeah, there's very a lot of the images have been changed. I don't know if you can specifically see it on this stage. but um, Yeah, there's a lot of censorship in this Korean version. I'm not going to play it though because... Um, yeah. That was not an enjoyable experience. Where are we going to put it? Is it better than Pirates? No. Is it better than Gunmaster? No. Is it better than Driving Force? No. <laughs> Is it better than Riding Hero? Um, I'm not sure. I guess there's more in it than Riding Hero. Riding Hero just... Yeah, it's better than Riding Hero. Riding Hero is just unredeemable. Dogen Warriors is just uh, a bad fighting game. Um, yeah, so that's where that one goes. Now let's uh, let's bring up. Well, let's let's bring up locally. You can't see me looking over the games. I'm just picking a page number of a uh, page number at random and uh, seeing what games are on it. I'm picking a game from it. Wondering what's going on behind the scenes right now. Come on. In the sideways. I should probably sort out something better for doing this than uh, trying to rely on this arcade uh, database site, which really, really, really slow. <laughs> and, and forget your settings, and if you don't do anything for a while, it, it yeah, it, it, it. Hmm. What what? <laughs> what is the uh, exclamation of what about uh, should have happened? Come on. Okay. 
anybody has a suggestion for games, then um, please drop them in the chat because this site really does not work well at all. Oh, no, it's finally decided to load. Um, there we go. <laughs> Shogun being better than Riding Hero. Riding Hero does nothing. Um, it, it, it's a very nothing game that uh, I really don't see any value in. I would much rather just talk to myself playing uh, Riding Hero there than... Uh, I'd talk to talk to myself playing Shogun Warriors there than ever play Riding Hero again even. Um, that's some rough choices on the pages that just came up. Uh, let's, let's have another look at a, a different page. Uh, sorry if uh, this is not the most entertaining part of the stream. I'm just going through things and deciding if I really, really, really want to play some of these games. Uh, okay, let's let's play that. Let's play that. This is one where it's often considered that the uh, Mega Drive version is superior, but uh, shown off Atomic Runner, Atomic Runner shown off. Um, apparently, quite a convert controversial game back in the day because um, uh, Shinobu. <laughs> Nuclear Man, the fighter. I don't have chance to read these. Okay. Anybody can read that quickly, please, please let me know. Yes, it's a walk along shooter. Where, yeah, you, you can do like some of things, but then really have to do it. When, when you're doing the somersault, you fire in all sorts of random directions. If you're if you're pressing a direction when you jump, you do the you sort of roll jump thing, which um, is very difficult to aim your shots. If you're standing still, you just do a standing jump, which is much easier. That's a paradox. Now we did look at a few days of these games on the last one of these streams, and they fared quite well. I didn't see what killed me, but uh, I'm sure it was something. And sometimes the spinning jump helps. You want to try and get something behind you, but it's very nice. So yeah, these little rock things are fine. Otherwise, you can't shoot backwards. But, um, that is your only hope to shoot something behind you if you want. Pay attention to where you are, though, while you're trying to shoot things too. So if you just say the Mega Drive version of this is better, uh, let's, let's, find, let's find a bit of slowdown here. Oh, and um, sudden game over. That's uh, interesting to use. I don't know why this is configured to um, two credits per coin. That's an unusual choice. I don't think we get a shot on. sure what I was meant to do there. Traditional day to east slowdown. Yeah, day to east unfortunately. Yeah. A lot of their games are not the best optimised, are they? I mean, Midnight Resistance is absolutely terrible for it, especially late on in the game. Well, I can turn around. There's a turn around button. I did not realise that. I've been saying I can't shoot backwards this whole time and there's actually a turn around button. Well, you learn something all the time, don't you? I can't jump on that. But I didn't realise there was a turn around button. So, <laughs> well, that change is probably very little, but uh, at least I can turn around. Okay. I stand corrected. 
feel very awkward. Can I bounce on the actual things on the side? I'm surrounded by the dogs. Can we bounce on these? Can I bounce on those? Yeah, I can, I can bounce on those, okay. And I can turn around, so... Uh, it, feels, it feels very Defender-like uh, in the sense that you've got to turn around, but can, I do like the way you can just pop on things in. Yeah, the backwards walking is um, quite something. At least you can walk backwards. backwards. Um, yeah, th I thought this was a two-button game, but it's actually a three-button game with the backwards walking. I don't, I don't like leaps of faith like that. You always think it might be the wrong thing to do. Oh, yeah, turn around. There we go. So, um, what makes the Mega Drive version of this so much better? I think I did play the Mega Drive version more. Is it just more refined? I'm going to have to bounce on these. I think I'm going to Hmm. I have a feeling, um, Required some bouncy mechanics, not the uh, my kind. But if this requires bouncy mechanics. I am going to avoid. Ooh, slow down. <laughs> there we go. I don't mind this. I prefer this over a big car knob. I like the fact the enemies don't instantly kill you. You, you do die quite easily. But being able to bounce on... Being able to bounce on enemies is, is handy. It'd be a bit harsh if everything killed you instantly. I could place the bottom no power down there. Graphic, okay, the graphics better in the Mega Drive and the music's uh, even. Okay. That makes sense. I, I like the uh, the tiny sprite. I do like getting tiny sprites though, so this kind of appeals to me. I think it's, there's still a tiny sprite in Mega Drive. But yeah, you do have to learn the attack packs on this thing, I think. Because um, now I know he's going to do Okay, it goes wherever you are on the screen, this uh, dragon thing. Fair. Um, we've probably seen enough of Atomic Run and Chernoff, haven't we? Uh, we've not played it as long as Shogun Warriors, but you get the idea. Fun little run-along platformer. A little bit tricky, but uh, some good mechanics. So ranking it. Uh, good as Pirates, no. Good as Gunbuster. No. Better than driving force, yes. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna add that's an easy easy slot in there. So yeah, that slots in there quite nicely. And that's six games we've done so far. And we'll be going for an hour and a quarter. Um Right, I don't know if the next one's vertical or horizontal. I already know which one I'm going to do because I want to stick with the data east. The play game that I mentioned last time. We'll see. And it's, uh, it's horizontal. Okay. Better make a drive version of Taito's in Sector X, yeah. I mean, that did happen quite often, didn't it, really? There were home ports that were a bit better than the arcades. 
Edward Randy. Uh, maybe another time. But yeah, I, I did mention that there was a sort of another arcade punch em up um, when we were playing Funky Jet. And this is the one I was meaning, Metal Clash from Data East. I mean, it's not quite Funky Jet, but you are flashing along and you are punching. Yeah, the range of the laser on Chernov was a bit uh, bit weak, but then again, I was lacking power, wasn't I? But it's not really much like Punky Jet, but you are punching things. It's, it's asteroids. The UFO with a big UFO sound. Then again, Space Invaders have a UFO with UFO sound, so I think that's just how UFO sound. The frame rate here is um, a little off. I mean, again, uh, we're talking data east and slow dust. So maybe that's not too surprising. Way more advanced than Funky Jet. I guess say I quite like Funky Jet. At least that the version where you can actually punch the ball. Um, I think the Japanese version is It's just the export version of Funky Jet that don't let you punch up. I like that. Or a prototype or whatever it is version of it's got the nice comic book intro and other changes. I don't know if it's a prototype or if it's just different therapy or usually. Yeah, you're flying along and just punching things and kicking things. And this just seems to have sprites where all the body parts are making individual different different individual sprites, I think, so it's it's got that sort of the way everything moves is very robotic, you know, it feels like they are robots made of multiple parts as opposed to the sprites, and they explode into multiple parts, and it's kind of got that feel. Fortunately, I, I just lost. <laughs> yeah, you can kick with this one. You can do, oh, you can do different directions. I can kick up this like that too, and do downwards. So you, and, you know, you, you can get around them kicking any punch in any direction you want, which is, I can't get off the strap from the You can play it properly. Wait, can I sit down? Punch you. There we go. Yeah, for 85, I, I think this is actually really good. This, there wasn't much else like this around the 85. Performance could have done with a bit of work. I think it's the Z8 the most one, the one at least. Maybe it would have fared better on a faster piece of hardware. Gameplay solid. I don't, I don't think this has appeared in the new collections of it when JT's game has been re released. I don't remember seeing much about it in recent years anyway. One of those day three's games that feels a little lost, at least to me. Um, I did see that there's a new Snow Brothers game coming out. Uh, like one with actual 3D graphics, like Snow Brothers Wonder. I'm curious to see how that's going to turn. I've got a completely different subject, but I'm just going through releases of, the, uh, releases of games for the, uh, the year to come. And uh, the reason there's a new Snow Brothers. <laughs> not, not the actual remake one we've got already, just a new new one. I lost one. Better than Cyborg Justice. Yeah, I think I remember Cyborg Justice was uh, a bit nice. <laughs> it's gets kind of tricky at this point though. <laughs> I'm, if the enemies are actually starting to defend and... Um, two of them. And we'll get balance between them and destroy them. It does not want me to play past stage 3, does it? He's saying I didn't make the top 20. Metal Clash. 1985 Day to East. And as you level 1. Oh, they're getting nice at the intro. Not every game's got an intro like this. I mentioned that when we were playing Pirates.
No continued feature, I guess. Yeah, the painting's good. It feels like this first stage is a bit of a practice. You can usually punch things quite quickly. Again, that, that's that's best in Shogun Warriors, where it's just like, oh, okay, no, you, you, you're going to die. Now. Feels good when a game actually lets you get into it a little bit. The UFO's energy. Actually, practice the controls, work out what you're doing. And then it gives you the loss, which... See your head in. Now I've got his weapons here, I've got the enemy's weapons so I can use fire I can fire, that's what I missed out the other times. If you knock the thing out of the enemy's hand, like the other one had the shield, I think if I'd managed to pick up the shield on that third level, I'd have had the shield. I appear to have kept it as well. I think I kept it between stages. Feels like I'm back. Oh, I've lost it now though. Yeah, I've lost my gun. Oh, it's there, it's there, it's there. No, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Batman on the tire. <laughs> hmm. Get your gun and knock your gun out your hand and steal that. Right, too, because it's, it's kind of good. Double KO. <laughs> double KO counts? Oh, it's maybe stage three. Oh, double KO. Double KO. Double KO is fine. I don't know if a technique for knocking their guns out of their hand so that you can collect them, unfortunately. Whenever it's happened to me, it's been more by um, chance. See, so this is one with the shield. I mean, you really need to get that shield. Oh, now I've got the shield, that's better. I'm still lost. <laughs> Never mind. But yeah, there's quite a lot going on with this one. More than meets the eye. Task order is to try and get the enemy weapon. Yep, can get this. Before the enemy gets it back. Where's it going? Oh. Make it actually easy though. <laughs> no. Certain attacks on cyber just make you lose everything. It sounds like an SNK final boss. No, missed it. Better than nobody has it than the CD of it. And we took that. Stage 4. Put that one out. Backgrounds are maybe a little dull, just guys on platforms and stuff, but uh, pretty faint. Pretty faint, but. I can play with them. So these uh, these health pickups from the UFOs are free good enough. But so uh, you can build up your health between basically, you know, do your stages before you reach the boss again. Oh no, I thought it would be handy, and then you're gonna set your phone and just stab them. 
Let me go. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. <laughs> but that didn't last for long enough. Didn't last for long enough to use it. Any boss can uh, make you lose an entire credit on Cyborg Justice. Oh dear. I might have to give Cyborg Justice a look at one point. I'm sure I played it uh, back when I used to do... Well, play more Mega Dragon emulators, but I, I don't remember having fond memories of it, it sounds like. Um, I'm probably right not to have fond memories of it. But uh, yeah, that is a bit of a Pac-Man C on the uh, the title there, isn't it? I'm playing this game outside of Japan, oh dear. Most definitely so in, in Japan. I guess this didn't actually get released outside of Japan then. Surprising. This could have done quite well to any market. Unless there is an export version that's just very rare and not jumped, I don't know. But yeah, uh, Metal Clash from Data East. Uh, this one will be. Uh, this one will be trickier to rate. Um. Okay, it's going to be displacing one of the top three because it's definitely better than Driving Force. I think I like it better than uh, Chernoff. Um, it's actually quite comparable to Gunmaster. Gunmaster is sort of an arena-based platformy fighter where you're fighting multiple enemies and then some bosses. And this was a... Um, one way you're doing similar but flying around as a robot. I think Gunmaster has more depth. Although this one did let me steal the weapons. Mm, yeah, I think I like this more than Gunmaster. Uh, do I like it more than Pirates? No, probably not. Um, I, just, I really like Pirates. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to put Metal Clash above um, Gunmaster. There we go. That's where our list stands for now. Let's just uh, save. Um, and, yeah. Okay, what am I doing now? I'm going to get up the uh, arcade database again and look for another game to play. So, hold on. We will do this very, very slowly, because it's always very, very slow. And, um, see what we put there. Now, I don't know why this site is so slow. It always has been. But if um, anybody got any comments on the game so far, do you agree with the rankings that I've been doing? Or, oh, look, I'm hidden by the chat window. I should have probably disabled the chat window on the screen. <laughs> Hello from behind the chat, Joe Boss. Uh, actually, I put the chat up here. That works better. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like Cyborg Justice was very good then. <laughs> Uh, maybe you uh, maybe could have done with some refinements or or fixes or or just not existing at all. But uh, Metal Clash was fun. Now, come on, this arcade database site is really, really, really bad. Okay, I might just have to pick a game some other way because uh, that is is not loading. I want to pick. Okay, let's go with a uh, Namco game, which is a vertical. This is Rompers from Namco on Namco System 1, I believe. Again, it appears to be a Japanese release, maybe not Namco's most famous game. The title logo looks like it's gone on holiday. Um, 1989, so in the 80s. Uh, what have we got? We have a cute maze game. Where you push over walls. Oh, it is not cool. Bit of an intro. We had quite a few games with that intro. <laughs> and uh, maze of on what look like dominoes. Yeah, that, that's uh, an effective intro. 
Nossa, que era nisso? Não sei o que é isso. Maybe not the easiest perspective to see what's going on. But that sort of um, slightly washed out colour scheme Monko used around this time. Yeah, just to just enjoy this wall falling on you. Yeah, these are quite shuddily built walls. Yeah. Missed. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought I could push the wall on it before it pushed the wall on me, and I was wrong. Alright, I just pretend these enemies aren't here before we do this. How's that? Yeah, these are these um not the only game Namco did with armadillos either. They did an entire armadillo racing game. But I say game, I mean I can count armadillo racing as a proper game, you don't really get much gameplay, it's more one of those novelty things. Uh, I suppose it is a game. Now the enemies are walking walls. In a maze of walls and keys and I'm not even the impression as oh I should have seen that coming. <laughs> I can continue, yes. Let's continue on our romp in rompers. Oh, I learned nothing. Quite sneaky for a... Uh, to do that so early on. Trap you in the middle and actually make you wait before you come out. It's only level 5 game. Some chill. Round 6. Push that that way because there's a yeah, there's a something blocking it. It's got a bit of a puzzle element too. Oh dear, no, no, run, 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 run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, this was on the Namco Museum. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... They got a PS1 version. Oh uh, yeah, Namco did put a few things on um, PS1, didn't they? Aren't there, aren't, there still, aren't there some English versions of games on the PS1 as well that didn't, as far as we know, have English releases in the old okay. In the arcades, um, that, that, I think that Valkyrie game was on the Namco PlayStation collections, wasn't it? In English, when there's no English arcade game, the uh, Namco System 2 1. I'm not doing a very good job of getting past this one. From Arcade Archives 2. Yeah, it's a very cute little game. Obviously, I'm making some terrible mistake in my strategy here. I'm going to push it more carefully. There we go. That's better. Just take my time. I think that's one of the things for this game. You can't just rush around. You have to take your time a little more. And, um, I'm not always very good at taking my time on these. Oh, dude, there's going to be threats from every direction now. Sure. 
I became toast. Nice little bonus for crushing multiple enemies at once, of course. Good, and get the little one. Gemstones, well, might be good. Yeah, I mean, the this seems to have been a Japanese arcade release. Japanese only arcade release, even. Again, which surprises me. But, um, many games were. We have seen many Namco games which we thought were Japanese only, uh, where non Japanese revisions have turned up over the years. But um, there were probably quite a few of these that never left Japan. I thought I'd die then. Luckily I haven't. I got one, but yes. I know I've got some uh, different old tiles. Oh, come here. Yeah. Squish. Look at this. This doesn't seem to be where I really want to be. <laughs> at least the collision box is um, a fairly safe, uh, fairly fair. I mean, I could walk around the enemies there. But yeah, I think we've... Um, We'll see what Rompers is all about. Um, you know what, I kind of like this one. I like a good maze game. Um, in fact, I like this one a lot. Um, let's see. The question is, uh, I didn't play much of it. But um, yeah, I think I think I actually like Rompers uh, more than anything else we've played today. It's such a cutesy maze game. The mechanics are solid. It's got a puzzle element to it. Um, it's a really strong Namco game. Actually, I'm surprised it isn't more widely known. I didn't get a wider release. It it, it does everything right. I mean, Namco have got a few games like that, and. Um, Rompers is definitely one of them. Uh, Tinkle Pit, which isn't a game we play today, is, is another that I'd sort of say was Namco doing Namco very well. So, yeah, I'm going to throw that one up at the top of the list, and um, that's where it's going to sit for now. Um, what else can we play, though? What else is there to play? I'm not sure. If the, uh, the site was working a bit better, I would... Um, no more immediately, but now it doesn't load at all. So I'm just going to look through things. Uh, okay. Okay, I've got an idea. We've not done any Konami today, have we? So I think we'll do a Konami game. Konami game. Yeah, Valkyrie no Den Setsu is the one that I think got a, a PlayStation port in English from that. Um, so yeah, let's play Surprise Attack from Konami, let's see how this one fares. I've been a Konami game, I've decided to load the Japanese version because uh, Konami. Twenty-five hours of count piece is, is the time we specified, which is unusual. You and who's army punk? Nice little intro. I'm not after you insert the credit, but um, an actual attack intro. The surprise attack, 1990. So this is the year after Rompers. And uh, let's have a game with it. It's um, it's a shinobi rolling thunder like thing. Set in space with gravity mechanics.
You did it. You did it. both of those things. Excellent. Yeah, I, I played this one a little bit before. I think it got to the point where I got a little bit stuck. It's got a nice cutscene between the things. Shall we go in? Yeah, just start to apply some quite precise time and jumps. And patience, which is where I often fail to do things. Speed dude bonus. <laughs> yes, high speed dude. See, this is where you jump in the background. I think this might be missing a blending effect in there. So I think you meant to be um, dark when you're behind the background. That could be nice. This is where it starts to get a bit nasty, isn't it? Indeed, is where it starts to get a little bit nasty. I think this is where I choked last time I played the game, too. Yeah, we'll try, we'll try to do it further. Typical Konami, sudden difficulty spike. Not let you even fire. And I get stabbed. Yeah, this is what happened last time I played this. You suddenly get to that point, and you're dealing with a guy trying to stab you, somebody throwing bouncing bombs at you, and all sorts of other stuff. And it's suddenly becomes... I don't like the bouncing bombs. I have a super move. I don't know if they have any space ninja magic now. Not without getting a power up. Yeah, I, this uh, this is where this game just goes downhill for me. And maybe it's uh, right, it is a skill issue. But I don't. This is even a very tricky part of the game. But you've suddenly got to pay attention to a lot more things. You can only fire forwards. I mean, that's very standard for this type of game, but. Um, Worth mentioning the kind of fire forward. Also, the fact I think so I think the emulation is slightly broken. You should be able to see that those guys are behind the paint because at the moment you really can't tell who's where. So that one's in front. They're both in front. Where you get back, we do this. I don't know. You still have to go behind this thing to get the uh, bomb found here. So there is a time left.
There we go. Medium paced operator. I wasn't a high speed dude this time. I did it eventually. But yeah, I think the. Um... I don't think how I can actually damage it when it feels like that. Big zoomy explosion. Now oh, we have big zoomy explosions. So yeah, it's got foreground background stuff. It's got multi-level stuff. I think it's the emulation is slightly flawed. Apparently, it's got quizzes and um, so selected the uh, Japanese version. I don't have a clue what it's asking me, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Never mind. I didn't answer any correctly. So there you go. And these, yeah, these. Gorgeous 80 ladies who really don't fit the rest of the art style of the game. You see graffiti! Ooh, now I'm the <laughs> Yes, now up is Dork and Bud. I was quite sure where they're walking. That rolling thunder. We've gone, we've gone all a stride on you. Ooh. Hey, that's not fair. That's... <laughs> so many graphics. Okay, you get the idea of a surprise attack. Um, I'd, I'd be surprised if some of these bombs weren't emulating glitches with the uh, transparencies. But I'm not sure. I've not seen original footage of it. Uh, I just know names Konami's drivers. Names Konami drivers aren't necessarily the best. And within 25 hours, one 25 hours, one 24. Anyway, um, surprise attack. Apart from the difficulty spike in that place, I kind of like it. Um. I probably like it more than Metro's Gunmaster, in fact, um, but not as much as Metal Clash, so I think that's where I'm going to put it. I think it does split the split those for me. Oh, I've not got the ranking screen up, have I? Um, here we go. Here, here is the ranking page. So, a surprise attack from Konami is going to um, drop, um, drop in between those two. So I think that's um, that's a fair place to put it. Uh, so what? So we've done nine games so far, and we're on one hour fifty minutes. So yeah, let's try and squeeze in a tenth game on the stream. Uh, let's see if we can actually get the uh, online database to work this time. Have a quick look at what we're going to play. Uh, yes, we seem to be working again now. Excellent-ish. <laughs> and let's go to what? Page, say page 90. Uh-huh. Well, maybe we're working here. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Right. Now, should we play a good game? A bad game? I don't know. I've got a few ideas. I've got a few ideas indeed, and um, I think I'm going to give you something. One of the stage bosses has a rotating effect that was missing. Is it entirely missing, or, or um, just slightly broken? 
Um, okay. <laughs> You're going to love me for this one. Let's play A Day in Space from 1987 from EFO SA. Another Spanish game. On the magnet system. One of the original games on the magnet system. This one is a horizontally scrolling shooter where you have bi directional movement on a vertical screen. Um, yes, it can, I'm going to turn the volume down on this one because the sound is not great. Um, so it's got uh, interesting, what kind of like scan digitized. Graphic. They don't quite look hand drawn. They look like pictures of mushrooms. They be this. And it's a little bit like um, Fantasy Zone from memory. There's different bases on the ground that you have to somehow destroy. But I think you've only got limited time in which you can score. Is it? No, is it number of enemies? There are bases on the ground, but I think it's just number of enemies you have to destroy or something like that. I don't even remember it. It doesn't communicate what you do very well. And that was one credit gone already. I think we crashed it. Right? Oh no, we've not crashed it. It's doing something. Uh, I accidentally inserted seven credits. <laughs> Never mind. Well, we're not going to play seven credits worth of credits on this. You sort of the problem is you're always against the edge of the screen unless you're constantly tapping to be in the middle of the screen and then you turn around. So unless you keep turning around, you end up really close to the edge of the screen, which makes you vulnerable. Hmm. Oh yeah, and you can collide with those things even when they can't shoot you. This game's full of wonderful design. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right. Does that thing open? You can tap it. Let's go here. No, this should have been a, 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 a horizontal game. <laughs> Absolutely, should have been a horizontal game. You, you, you. you it's very claustrophobic and it's got that very euro platformer movement when you change the camera movement and change direction which makes it incredibly difficult to avoid things and the bullets are tiny and, and that doesn't mean they're easy to avoid that just means they're difficult to see especially when you have such bad control At least you can rapidly fire. But you have to react to everything really, really quickly, otherwise, you say those ships home in on you and they're going to get you if you don't react to them properly. But yeah, that counter at the bottom does go down as the stage progresses. I do like the fact that they, they, they keep EFO in the bottom corner the whole time, just to remind you of who made this game. In case you really wanted to know who the geniuses behind this title were. But yeah, this feels like the counter should be like the number of bases or the number of big ships you kill, but it, it's just a, a counter that goes down over the across the stage. It's you have no real bearing on much at all. Nor a timer, you've survived this long, your ears have survived this long. Uh, I mean, to the same credit, it's one of the few original games they made for the magnet system. Whereas most of the magnet sequence is just that you can't get anywhere because it's you can't shoot vertically. 
So unless you react immediately to those things, they're going to kill you. <laughs> Idiot games. I'm playing any games I want to play, although this is the last game of the, uh, this, the stream. <laughs> but yes, my streams are known for me playing lots of bad games. Um, I mean, I was playing even worse games last time. I was playing that uh, 251 plug and play. This is just Spanish arcade go. Rank. Hey, welcome. Hey, Kusanagi. Hey, Kusanagi. Kusagani. Hey, Kusagani. That's the one. Hey, Kusagani. I assume the yes, SNK hey character. And um, yeah, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. And yes, I'm playing, um, playing some bad games. We don't even have the, like, we got both of them just fire, so I can just open it at the same time, but I don't think it really helps. Uh, um, I didn't personally dump it. I did uh, do the emulation magnet system that is in main, or well, it really needs replacing because it's not very good. It was kind of quickly hacked together. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like the Burning Cavern more than this one, at least. Um, there's all sorts of other games on the magnet system there. There were some more uh, disc dumps, but I think a lot of the discs for it have failed. I mean, we've got disc dumps for things like Double Dragon for the magnet system, and it's like, well, it doesn't even boot, so I don't think it's even a complete game in there. But yes, uh, apparently Double Dragon was ported to the magnet system, and Pac Mania, and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, the Movie Kids version works. Uh, Paris Dakar crashes when you get to the last level, which might be a disc game problem. Some of the others crash now and maybe didn't used to, which is probably just an emulation problem. Um, yeah, I did want to complete the first level of this because there, there are different backgrounds, believe it or not. But, um,. Maybe just going forward and, and, and playing like this is best than using the left and right mechanics at all. They, they give you these mechanics, but then maybe it's best to ignore them. At least this way I'm, I stand more chance of killing these things that are in front of me. But yeah, no, I'm not going to get stuck. Oh, well, I'm still going to press into bullets and do that. So, uh, game over. We're going to keep playing this until we get to the two hour mark. Well, the, uh, I'd be surprised if anything works. I, I mean, if you play, if you've looked at the uh, version of Time Scanner, you can literally just get the ball stuck and soft lock the game forever. And that happens on real hardware too. That's how well these things were tested. But the physics are so broken in that version of Time Scanner, it's just, yeah. <laughs> The funny thing is, they try to claim these things are all licensed and, and, and everything else, and, and no, none of them are licensed. But yeah, I'd say the Double Dragon disc it, it didn't boot to anything. There could be an emulation problem, it could be a bad disc. Um, I mean, the, the, the people with the hardware have uh, you know, volunteered to draw up schematics and everything else. Um, which so somebody who's better at working with schematics was to take them up on. Could probably get improved emulation, um, but the discs really need to go to somebody who's an expert in data recovery from discs, because some of them are in pretty bad states. Uh, it's unfortunate, but yeah, when you're dealing with something that is kind of this janky in the first place. No, no, don't, do no. No. <laughs> No, none of this was properly licensed at all. Can I even complete the first stage on this game? Come on. We're down to one of those things. Yes, maybe we're almost there. Oh, my God. I've got a life left, though. My last life. Come on. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
it didn't be under the safe. Must be there soon. Oh, failed again. <laughs> so no, there, there are more stages to this. The backgrounds do change up. Um, but I, I failed to get there. Anyway, I did say I was going to do about two hours and uh, ten games. Um, we do need to rank that one though. So where's that one going to go? Um, well, is it worse than Riding Hero by SNK? You, you know what? I, I think it is. <laughs> so, I, I'm sorry, UFO. I know it's an original game. But, um, final game of the stream is also the one I'm ranking bottom. Um... It's an interesting list. We we had ten games. I'm not really surprised the Namco game came out top. Namco games are very well polished and generally fun. Pirates is always a surprise, you know. I I don't know how Spanish developer Nix managed to make such a fun little game. Metal Clash, yeah, much better data is game than anybody gives it credit for. Surprise Attack, solid take on sort of the rolling thunder shinobi thing from uh, the. Th uh, Genre from Konami and Gunmaster, often underrated little arena battle thing that's kind of original. So, yeah, I think that deserves its place just uh, about mid there. And then Chone off Atomic Runner, solid day to his scroller. Driving Force, Pac Man conversion. I, I kind of like it. I, I don't think it's actually unplayable. I think it's a fun little racing game, very basic, doesn't do much, but for a quick credit, it's fine. Shogun Warriors, I found to be basically unplayable riding hero is bitterly disappointed disappointing and can't hold a candle to um, hang on and has that stupid rpg mode where you're paying for time and no or story mode worth want to call it and a day in space which was just no let, let's not play a day in space yeah, it's not suitable for an arcade environment. I'm sure as a home game, the RPG story thing is fine, but you don't want to put in an, a credit in your arcade machine and be going through, there's nobody here screens and reading all this story while the time ticks down and you're not playing anything, you're not doing anything. Then you get to a race, you've got about 30 seconds left and it's like, oh, insert another coin. It doesn't work as an arcade game. And it doesn't look good as an arcade game. So yeah, Riding Hero... You know, I, I was almost tempted to put a day in space above Riding Hero, but I, I think on a technical and design level, that would have been a little unfair. I mean, day in space just... It doesn't communicate with you what you're meant to do, and none of the mechanics seem to work together, and, and it's just a mess. <laughs> um, I, I love Riding Hero as much as Final. No, Final Lap is a far superior game to Riding Hero. Even I'll admit that. But, um, yeah, we've done two hours on this, so um, I am going to say that is the stream for today. Um, I will export this over to YouTube um, short, well, after the stream ends. And uh, say so we'll do a few more of these. might get up to, like, uh, 50, 60 games, and then I'll try and order the games from each of the, the streams against each other. But uh, <laughs> final lap, final lap, uh, it's... It, it, Got, I kind of started to like it the more I played it on these streams. At first, I, I didn't like it much. It just felt a bit too twitchy. But um, no, I, I did quite like Final Lap by the end. Of it. Especially Final Lap R. I mean, it doesn't feel like a big step. You know, It doesn't feel great compared to the other races around at the time. But all the extra detail on the track side is quite a, a step up from Final Lap uh, 3 at least. Um, it just feels a little dated compared to the 3D races that were around at the time. Um, anyway, thank you all that have been here and uh, watching and talking and chatting and maybe even lurking. And thank you to everybody who has sat through this on YouTube if you, you're watching it later. I will uh, likely catch you on another one soon. Hopefully not too far away from now because I want to try and get into a bit of rhythm of doing these. But it's a case of you know squeezing them around work and everything else. Take care, take care everybody, and I will see you soon. Let's go to the outro.